Hello everyone. In this video, I will introduce batch normalization to you. Google proposed this algorithm to reduce internal coverage shifts in model training. First of all, let me introduce you myself. My name is Hao Chen, a full-time data scientist and AI consultant with MarkTechPost.com. In this video, I will firstly introduce what is internal coverage shift. Then I introduce batch normalization and how it reduces internal coverage shift. After that, I will show some experiments results. And at last, I will conclude the paper in one slide. Okay, let's talk about what is ICF. ICF is short for internal coverage shift. While training a model, we expect independent and identically distributed data. When the input distribution to a learning system changes, it is said to experience coverage shift. For a deep learning model, as the parameters of a lower layer changes, the input distribution of the upper layer also changes. It is called internal coverage shift. So, what problem will ICF bring to us? First, the upper layer's parameter need to continuously adapt to the new input data distribution, thus reduces the learning speed. Second, the input of upper layer may tend to become too large or too small, which caused the learning stuck in the saturated region. At last, the update of each layer will affect other layers. The update strategy of each layer needs to become be as cautious as possible. To solve these problems, Google proposed a batch normalization algorithm. It is a kind of whitening of layers input. It scales and shifts the input data to expectation equals to zero and standard deviation equals to one. And it rescales and reshifts the data to expectation equals to beta and standard deviation equals to gamma. Beta and gamma are learning parameters of each neuron. The expectation mu and standard deviation delta of input data are calculated in a mini batch. That's why it's called batch normalization. Let me introduce the algorithm with a diagram here. Suppose we have a mini batch data with size equals to m. We first shift and scale xi by minus mu i and divide by delta i. Then we rescale and reshift xi by multiplying gamma i and plus beta i. Here is the pseudocode of batch normalization. In the back propagation phase, we just apply the chain rule to calculate the gradient. Now let me introduce some important details of batch normalization. We put BN before nonlinear activation rather than after it. With convolution layer, for each kernel, we has a unique BN parameter. We use mu and the delta of the training set instead of mini batch Y inference. With fixed mu, delta, beta, and gamma, we can merge BN with a linear transform to accelerate the inference. So what can batch normalization do? It accelerates the training with larger learning rate. It is not sensitive to the initial parameters. And it's easier, easier to stay in the long saturated region of activation functions. Batch normalization also provides similar regularization benefits as dropout. Let's look some experiments of BN. In figure A, I test the accuracy of a network trend with and without batch normalization with the number of training steps. Batch normalization helps the network train faster and achieve higher accuracy. In figure B and C, it shows the evolution of input distribution to a typical sigmoid, shown as 15, 50, and 85 percentiles. Batch normalization makes the distribution more stable and reduces the re internal coverage shift. At last, let me conclude the paper. 
deep neural network models suffers the internal coverage shift. Batch normalization can reduce ICS by scale and shift layers output. With BN, we can accelerate DNS training. With BN, we can improve the SOTA models by a significant margin.